Phil Ebner here with videoschoolonline.com and today I'm going to show you how to create your very own whip pan transition right within Adobe Premiere Pro. Let's head into the computer and learn how to do it. All right, so I'm in Premiere Pro and I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to create a whip pan transition like this. Now I've seen a couple other tutorials online and I wanted to show you a couple things that I think will make this transition better. And so let's dive right in. Both of these transitions include adjustment layers and then some sort of effect that pushes the video from left to right or you can go up and down or really any direction. One is cool because it's all within one adjustment layer so you can literally just easily copy and paste this adjustment layer over any other sort of uh, transition. The other includes an adjustment layer and a push transition. I kind of like that one look a little bit better. Uh, it looks more natural, like a real whip pan would look, uh, but it does take that extra step. So first, let's do that method and let's go to into our effects. We're going to type in push and we're just going to drag this on top of the transition between any two clips. Let me make it a little bit shorter. So here you can see that it's pushing the second video from the left and then it's moving the first video to the right. I want to switch that. So if I click the transition, go up to effects controls and then click this east to west button, it's going to push actually the other way. So it's pushing everything from east to west. Okay, so that's our push. Now we want to apply some sort of blur effect, which is that sort of whip look. So I want to create an adjustment layer. So all you have to do is go to the new item button, click adjustment layer, it appears in your project panel and then just drop it on top right like so. I'm going to cut it down shorter so it's just the length basically of this push effect. And then the blur I'm going to add is actually the Gaussian blur. So one thing a lot of people on YouTube are showing to use the directional blur which is pretty cool and that's this one right here. But you notice that it has this sort of, sort of vignetting look on the edge that you can get rid of with the Gaussian blur and you can still have a similar sort of blurred effect. This is the Gaussian blur. You're just blurring the horizontal aspect of it. So let's go into our effects, search for blur, and you see all of your different blurs down here. I'm going to choose Gaussian. So here, if I put this on this adjustment layer, nothing happens. But if I go to my effects controls, down into Gaussian Blur. Now I can increase the blurriness. So if I increase this to something like 150, it doesn't look that great. But if we change the blur dimensions to be just horizontal, now it gets that sort of horizontal blur that you would see from actually whipping your camera left to right. This repeat edge pixels checkbox, that's that checkbox that I think really makes this blur look a little bit better than the directional blur. Of course, it's up to you if you like it or not. So the problem is that this Gaussian blur is applied throughout this entire adjustment layer. So see how it like one frame to the next, it applies this effect and it's super dramatic. I don't want that to be like that. I want it to ramp up to this spot here where the blurriness is 150 and then ramp down. So I'm going to use a keyframe. So I have my time indicator right here in the middle. And I'm going to set a keyframe right there in the middle with that stopwatch. And then I'm going to go over to the left and I'm going to drag my blurriness down to zero. And then I'm going to drag all the way to the right and again drag this to zero. Or I can click this little reset parameter button, that little arrow. And now it applies that sort of blur just in the middle. One thing I think makes this look better is if I select all of these keyframes, right click them and then choose Bezier and that sort of eases that in and eases it out and it sort of ramps it up even more. So you can play around with how much blur you want, maybe 250, hmm, maybe that looks better. And so that's a quick way to create this simple sort of whip pan. Now if you're interested, I'm going to show you the other way which is awesome because you can use it as just an adjustment layer. So let me actually select these two clips. I'm going to copy them over here just by holding the option button and dragging. So now we just have the hard cut. 
and I'm going to apply the adjustment layer again on top of this transition. Razor blade it a little bit shorter. Okay, so the effect that we use here is the offset. So if you type in offset, let's apply this to the adjustment layer. Now this is a cool effect where you can kind of move your entire video around. So we're gonna create an animation that way. So first I'm going to set a keyframe for how it is now at the very beginning of the adjustment layer with that time watch right there, stopwatch. And then I'm going to go to the end and I'm going to drag this to the left. I gotta get my timeline indicator. Let's put it in the middle so I can see what I'm doing. Drag to the left until it's exactly even. And that's actually gonna be negative 640 on my timeline. So it's gonna be negative uh, whatever your position is here. So it starts at 640, then it's gonna be negative 640. And now I'm gonna move this keyframe to the very end. So now we have this sort of movement. And this is what a lot of other YouTubers are showing how to do this effect, which is kinda cool but it's not really natural. See how as it moves, it's not being pushed by the other clip. It looks like it's being pushed by a duplicate of this original video. That's what I don't really like about it. I'm going to actually go ahead and make this easy and quick by just copying this Gaussian blur to this adjustment layer where we have the offset. So if I go to the beginning of this, paste it. Let me extend this just so I can see what I'm working with in my keyframes up here. So now I want to go to the middle, basically, actually maybe right before it cuts and ramp up to this blurriness right here. So I'm going to move this keyframe in the middle over to the left. And then I want the blurriness to end right when it's ending its motion. So I'm going to line these two keyframes up like so. So now we have this sort of whip pan effect. And again, I like the Gaussian blur a little bit better than the directional blur. I can show you what the directional blur would look like. I have it on this first one. I'm going to copy it and then paste it on this last one. So if I turn off the Gaussian blur and then go into the middle, you can see that the edges have this little vignette darkness. And because the directional blur effect doesn't have the repeat edge pixels, that's why I'd rather use the Gaussian blur with just the horizontal blur dimensions on. Now, if you were doing a whip pan that is moving from top to bottom, which you can do actually with this parameter of the offset effect or with the push effect going north to south, I would change the blur dimensions to be vertical. But when you're panning from left to right or right to left, I think the horizontal looks better. So this is cool because now we can literally just copy and paste this adjustment layer over any more transitions. Say we have another clip. Let's find another clip. These videos are from pexels.com, which is awesome. An awesome resource for free video clips. Let's just put this here. So now we have this transition that was automatically created between these two videos. You can adjust where it starts, where it ends by moving the adjustment layer to the left or right. And then you could also adjust the speed by basically going in here and moving the clips in or out. Some people might also want to change the interpolation of the offset. So let's right click those and then Bezier them or ease in, ease out, whatever you wanna do. So hopefully you like this tutorial on creating the whip pan transition right within Adobe Premiere Pro. Well, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for more. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below in the comments. And if you're looking to take your skills to the next level, make sure you head over to videoschoolonline.com where we have premium courses, more free tutorials and articles, guides, and all kinds of stuff that will help you become a better creator. Thanks so much for watching and have a beautiful day.